In this demonstration video, I'm going to illustrate how easy and quick it is to get started with a Schneider Electric Lexium 32 servo motor. In my case, I have a Lexium 32i, which combines the amplifier with the motor. Uh, a few stumbling blocks. First of all, I should point out uh, there's a commissioning software that com communicates with the drive, and you want to check the digital inputs to make sure that these are all set to freely available. Um, otherwise, it's going to be looking for inputs that are wired when they're not wired, if that's the case. Also, field bus, you're going to want to double check the node address. In my case, it's dip switch settings, and I have a node of 13 set. Next thing you're going to want to do is open up the sew machine software. Uh, the sew machine central software uh, allows you to configure your system. In my case, I have an HMI controller, and I'm using the HMI SCU controller. And then you, if you double click on controller, this is where you can access the logic builder. This is where you actually do your programming. And uh, you're going to want to check to make sure you're in the Codasys Classic view. And you're going to want to expand all the, um, all the tree items on here on the left. Next thing you want to do is right click on application and add an object. And you're going to add a POU. And I'm going to keep the default and I'm going to use function block diagram and say add. And then you're going to want to add this into the master task so it runs when you start the controller. Next thing you're going to want to do is add your motion network. I'm going to right click on CAN, add device, and double click on CAN, open optimized. This is going to build the relationship table, bring in all the objects, and add a CAN open network. It's important to note that this video focuses on intermittent motion, point to point, and this is non-synchronous. If I right click here again, I can add a device. This is where I'm going to add my Lexium uh, motor, in my case, the Lexium drive, Lexium 32i, and hit add. This is going to bring in the, the motor. And then from here, you can really begin programming. Uh, it's really as, as quick and easy as that uh, to get started with uh, um, uh, getting the program put in. I can hit close here. If I double click on the node, um, I'm going to change this to 13 to match what I have on my desk. And uh, that's about all I need to do there. Uh, in the application here, I have the POU, so I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see more um, going on. And the next thing I'm gonna do is right click and add, insert empty box. And I'm gonna add MC underscore. This is where all of our function blocks have come in. These are adaptations of the PLC open library for Lexium 32. First thing I'm gonna do is do a reset. So MC reset add in a local instance of that and I'm going to right click and insert a network below add another block and we're going to do MC power and add an instance of that right click insert network below and again insert empty box and I'm going to do an MC jog and we'll do it again insert network below and again, this is all done over right click operations. MC read position. I'm going to read the actual position. Okay. And, and I'm going to enable this so it's true at all times. And next thing we're going to do is look at the address that we have. This is the servo. It's, if I single click on here, you can see the name. I'm going to copy that name and paste it into the axis and hit enter. I'm going to do that on all of these. And next thing I'm going to do is add my HMI variables. These are all going to be global. So I'm going to do an HMI reset. And I'm going to specify the scope as global. Say OK. Do an HMI, HMI power. And we'll specify that as global as well. We'll do an HMI forward. We'll just do a forward command here. Say global and OK. And we'll do position. And we'll make this a global as well. All right. The rest of these uh, question marks I can blow away by hitting the delete button on my keyboard. And if you have any questions as far as what the input and output pins are of these function blocks, what you can do is hit F1. For example, on the jog, if I hit F1, it'll give me information about what uh, these inputs do. 
By default, it's uh, velocity slow, so it's going to assume a value of 60 RPM when I when I implement this. Next thing to do to share the variables, I'm going to add object, and I'm going to specify symbol configuration. I'm going to say add, and it's going to bring in the symbol configuration. If I, uh, it brings you right there. If I hit build, this is going to build my entire project and bring in the variables uh, that I've declared as global. Uh, and this is, uh, you need to specify them as global to share them with the HMI. I'm going to hit checkboxes in all of these. Next thing I'm going to do is double click on HMI application. This is going to pull up the video designer software. And now within the video designer software, if I go to my panel, you can see in the bottom right corner, it's updating the symbol information. It's bringing in all the tags, the Codasys tags. Um, Schneider Electric leverages Codasys 3.0, and these PLC open function blocks are all version 2.0. Um, we're going to go ahead and make this window a little bit bigger, and we're going to add a switch here, and we'll call it, uh, we'll give it a label right away. We're going to enable the label, and we'll call it reset. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a color of black, and we're gonna assign this um, as a bit, and we're gonna specify it as a, a, a momentary on, and we're gonna go ahead and add uh, the variable. So I'm gonna select the sew machine tab. This is bringing in the variable, and we'll assign it to reset, and we'll hit add, and we'll say okay. Now I'm going to right click to make that uh, de to deselect it. I'm going to copy and paste and I'm going to do the same thing for my power. I'm going to rename this to power. And I'm going to come over here and do a, a toggle. And we're going to um, just rename this here directly, power. I'm going to copy this whole thing and we're going to make it a switch with the lamp. We're going to make the lamp the exact same thing. I'm going to hit apply and then say OK. All right. Next thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to add a numeric display and we're going to monitor the position. So I'll go ahead and add that in. We're going to hit the variable and select uh, our position. Say OK. And we'll go ahead and say uh, we'll add units. We'll say counts. Say OK. All right. And then last but not least, we'll add our jog button. So I'm going to do again a copy-paste operation. Open this up, and we're just going to name it uh, forward. And what we're going to do is make sure that it's a toggle, and we're going to make sure it's uh, at the forward tag. FWD. Ah, that works. Say apply, and okay we should be all set to go so just to verify i'm gonna i'm gonna hit validate target and you see it's one warning we're good to go there we're going to close out of uh, the video designer now if i come back here and double click i can check my communication path i am using ethernet and it, it turns uh highlighted bold so that means i am connected so i'm going to do an online multiple download and i'm going to specify always perform a full download and i'm going to download the project And it's going to go ahead and download the project, and then it's going to boot the uh, HMI. And you can see here I have the motor that's disengaged. I can move the shaft right now, and it's going to come up. And there we are. So you can see as I move it, uh, already we're seeing the counts come in. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the reset button. We'll hit power. Okay, there we go. So we're, we're engaged, cannot move the um, shaft. And now I can go ahead and hit the forward button. And there we go, you see the counts moving up and the motor's moving.